Amanda was a person with a negative mindset, always obsessed with people deceiving each other to the point that she no longer wanted to interact with anyone she didn't know. Today was the weekend, and Amanda was packing her luggage while her husband Clay was still asleep. When Clay woke up, Amanda surprised him by announcing that the whole family would go on vacation that morning because she had just found a rental house on Long Island at a relatively cheap price. She explained that she wanted to escape the city for a few days to relieve the stress from work, so the entire family immediately hit the road. Upon arriving, they were greeted by a large mansion, and inside, they found luxurious furniture and all the amenities for a luxurious vacation. Amanda then went to the supermarket to buy groceries, where she saw a man buying a large amount of canned goods and beverages. The family later headed to the beach, and Amanda felt thrilled because there weren't too many people there. While everybody enjoying the relaxing moments, a massive oil tanker suddenly crashed onto the shore, causing everyone to panic and run. Clay inquired with security and learned that the navigation system of the tanker had malfunctioned. Upon arriving home, Amanda immediately opened her laptop to read news about the tanker, but the internet was disconnected and the TV wasn't working either. Strange events continued to unfold, making the couple increasingly perplexed. Meanwhile, their children continued to play carefree in the pool. By that evening, the internet still hadn't been restored, and the couple could only pass the time with a jumbling tower game. Suddenly, they heard a knock on the door. Clay went to open it and met a man introducing himself as Scott, the owner of the rented house. He was accompanied by his daughter, Ruth, and expressed a desire to stay overnight due to a power outage in the city. Amanda, naturally distrustful, immediately declined. Out of desperation, Scott opened a cabinet, took out $1,000, handed it to Clay, and requested to stay for one night in the basement. Seeing Scott and his daughter in a difficult situation, Clay tried to persuade his wife to let them stay. Amanda wanted to see Scott's ID, but unfortunately, he had lost his wallet. Unexpectedly, the TV displayed an emergency government announcement about the city-wide power outage. Despite her reluctance, Amanda agreed to let the father and daughter stay in the basement. As they went downstairs, Ruth was uncomfortable, feeling like despite being the homeowners, they were accepting this arrangement as if they were servants. However, her main concern at that moment was her mother, who was on a plane returning from a business trip. Scott tried to reassure his daughter, but deep down, he also began to sense that something mysterious was happening in the city. The next morning, Amanda received four urgent messages, two warnings about the prolonged power outage, one about a cyber attack, and the last one consisting of unintelligible code. Moreover, the phone had lost its signal, adding to Amanda's anxiety. With all communication methods down, they now felt isolated. Concerned, Clay hastily drove outside to gather information from the locals. Meanwhile, their daughter Rose coincidentally saw a deer appearing in the backyard. As she approached, she realized it wasn't just a few, but a whole herd numbering in the hundreds. On the road, Clay drove a long distance without seeing anyone, and the GPS malfunctioned, forcing him to turn back. He noticed a woman by the roadside who looked extremely distressed. The woman was knocking on doors and pleading for help, but she spoke only in Spanish, leaving Clay unable to understand. He decided to leave the woman and continue driving. As Scott still couldn't send messages to his wife, he decided to go to the neighbor's house to borrow a satellite phone. Upon arrival, he found the neighbor's house in disarray, devoid of any people. He opened the door and tried to search for a satellite phone and brought it outside to make a call, but there was still no signal. By this point, even the satellite was no longer functioning. Meanwhile, Clay, driving back, noticed a plane dropping something red onto the ground. Terrified, he quickly accelerated before those red leaflets could envelop his car. At the same time, Scott decided to go to the beach to assess the situation, only to be shocked to find the scene of a plane crash with scattered bodies everywhere. Before he could compose himself, another plane appeared in the sky also descending below prompting Scott to run away quickly before it crashed. Returning home with a dismayed expression, Scott recounted everything to Amanda. He now believed that those around them had either perished or left. Something truly serious was happening in the United States. Hearing this, Amanda was extremely frightened. Suddenly, they heard a loud explosion, 
followed by a high-frequency sound that made them shrill, covering their ears and even cracking the glass. Their children playing in the woods experienced a similar situation. The sound finally ceased, but the sun remained dazed in his head as he hadn't covered his ears in time. Amanda then instructed her two children to go to the bedroom and rest while turning to Scott with a series of questions about the current situation. First, the loss of internet, phone signals and GPS, followed by the disabling of satellites, then the high-frequency sound waves. Amanda couldn't maintain her composure, but Scott himself had the same questions as well. At that moment, Amanda suddenly remembered the man who had bought a large amount of food at the supermarket. She believed he knew about this in advance and had stocked up on supplies. When Amanda described the man's appearance, Scott realized that he was the one who built this house and currently lived nearby. Shortly after, Clay returned, unable to provide much information except for a red leaflet dropped by the plane. It was written in Arabic script that no one could understand. However, the sun unexpectedly revealed that it was the doomsday for the United States, as he encountered a similar phrase in a game he had played before. Clay and his wife then decided to drive to Amanda's sister's house in another city to seek refuge. However, as they exited the highway, they encountered a traffic jam. Amanda got out of the car to check and realized it wasn't a typical traffic jam, but a line of self-driving electric cars scattered across the road. Realizing the abnormal situation, Amanda immediately turned back to her car and sped away. The self-driving electric cars continued to rush wildly, colliding with each other, causing a complete traffic jam in the city. Eventually, the family had to return to Scott's house. Now, they were in utter confusion, not knowing what to do next, except sitting and praying that things would be restored. That evening, while Clay was trying to pour water into the bathtub for storage, Ruth, unexpectedly, came to invite him to the pool to smoke. Meanwhile, Scott sat with Amanda, suggesting that this might be the conspiracy of ruthless factions at the government level. Some mysterious group was attempting to manipulate not only the United States, but the entire world. Scott made this conjecture based on his past work with a government official. He began to share stories about himself with Amanda, and she started to appreciate Scott. Later, he invited Amanda to see his music collection, where they danced and embraced while maintaining their boundaries. Outside, a flock of pink flamingos suddenly landed in the pool, surprising Clay and Ruth. Shortly after, the high-frequency sound echoed again, prompting everyone to quickly cover their ears. The lights inside the house shattered, and the flock of flamingos flew away. For safety, the entire Clay family slept together that night, while Scott and his daughter still slept in the basement. Ruth was frightened and very concerned for her mother, and Scott silently suffered, having a foreboding feeling about his wife's fate. The next morning, Amanda woke up and couldn't find Rose. The son, when waking up, felt uncomfortable in his mouth. When he touched his teeth, they fell out one by one, accompanied by vomiting blood. Amanda, worried, asked Scott to find a way to take her son to see a doctor but he told her that there was no one left in the area. However, Scott thought the construction contractor might have stockpiled medication, so he and Clay took the son there for assistance. At home, Amanda and Ruth went into the woods to search for Rose. They stumbled upon a warehouse but found no sign of Rose inside. Amanda then noticed bicycle tracks, and while following them, a group of deer surrounded Ruth. Strangely, the deer seemed uninterested in attacking her. Amanda rushed to rescue Ruth, but both screamed wildly to drive them away, and the herd eventually left. They hugged each other, crying after the harrowing experience. Later, Amanda speculated that the animals were trying to warn them about something. Amanda continued to follow the bicycle tracks and saw a massive house in the distance, speculating that it might be where Rose had gone. On the other side, Scott and Clay arrived at the house of the construction contractor. When they knocked on the door, the man unexpectedly appeared with a gun, demanding they stay away from his house. Scott tried to explain their reason for coming, to seek help in saving Clay's son. The man explained that the tooth loss was caused by that high-frequency sound, which was actually a microwave weapon that emitted radiation through sound waves. This weapon had been used in Cuba in the past. 
The contractor refused to help and pointed the gun at them to drive them away. Frustrated by the man's indifference, Scott pulled out his gun in a threatening manner. Sensing the tense situation, Clay jumped in between the two guns, pleading and begging the man to have mercy and help them. Finally, the contractor reluctantly provided some antibiotics, but he still took $1,000 from Clay. He then revealed that the Russians had withdrawn all diplomatic officials from the United States, and a series of doomsday leaflets had been dropped in San Diego a few days earlier, but they were written in Chinese characters. The situation was becoming increasingly dire and complex, with a sense of global chaos unfolding. He also revealed that he had been hired to build a bunker for the wealthy not long ago. As they prepared to return home, Scott, dismayed, connected the pieces of the puzzle and realized they needed to quickly find shelter on Doomsday. The United States was indeed under a large scally attack by an alliance of countries considered enemies, and America's enemies were not few in number. Scott understood the three stages of the attack aimed at overthrowing a powerful nation from within. The first stage was isolation by disabling all communication and transportation systems. The next was to terrorize the country with secret attacks while spreading false information to agitate extremist factions in the United States. When these two stages succeeded, the final stage would unfold, which involved internal strife within the United States, essentially a civil war. On the other side of the forest, Amanda and Ruth were witnessing firsthand the third stage that Scott had mentioned. The city of New York was now enduring devastating bombing attacks. Meanwhile, inside Amanda's house, as observed from the forest, Rose had found a sturdy steel door. Upon opening it, she discovered a well-prepared underground shelter for Doomsday. It was fully equipped with everything they needed, from ample supplies to a radio communication system. Emergency announcements appeared on the screen, revealing that the White House and major cities were under attack by ruthless armed forces and radiation had spread to residential areas. Back at the shelter, Rose found her favorite movie, happily sat down to enjoy some pleasure amid the apocalyptic scenery enveloping the world outside. This is the end of the movie. If you enjoy it, please like and subscribe to support my channel. Thanks for watching.